Now, if you'd uh, said this time last year the Beatles would release a new song, uh, the Rolling Stones would have a new number one album, and Jimmy Page would be back on stage playing his iconic double neck guitar, uh, we might have questioned your judgment. But it's all happened. We spoke to Leslie Ann Jones last week about her new book on Paul McCartney's career post Beatles. So this week, I thought we'd celebrate Jimmy Page's return to the stage with his surprise recent performance at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony in New York. If you weren't aware, he was there to induct one of his own guitar heroes, Link Ray, into the Hall of Fame. In 2014, Jimmy was my guest on Sounds of the 70s, and we chatted about his ambitious project to remaster the entire Led Zeppelin catalogue, which he'd just completed. In a moment, you'll hear an excerpt when we chat about the third Led Zeppelin album. But I began the interview by asking Jimmy if he needed to take a break in 1970 after the huge success of the first two Led Zeppelin releases. Yeah, and I tell you what, if you if you looked at Le Led Zeppelin's schedule of what we were doing e each side of this so-called time off, it, it, it wasn't very long. The other guys had families too, you know, they had children and... My goodness, we'd worked so hard during 1969. Just looking at the itinerary of the year, it would make one tired to look at it. And you know what? That wasn't even the full picture. There was so much extra that that was done. So we really, really deserved a bit of a break in every respect. And uh, we'd sort of cracked America in, I'd say, sort of one tour. The first tour that we went over there, with everything that... It just spread like wildfire across the states, but then, but then it was a question of just going around, and you know there were so many people coming to see us right across the the whole uh, continent of the states. We'd recorded on the road over there in the states. We'd come back and done a bit more thank you and living loving made over here, and then gone back and recorded, and it was mixed. And now the point is the album's out. We've done touring around it, and we've got a we've got a break. Uh, you Tell know, us a bit about that, that cottage in Wales. Yeah, I want to get to that. Robert had said, oh, there's this cottage I used to go to, I believe, when he was younger. His parents had, had gone there in Wales, and do you fancy coming down there? He was going to take his, his family, his wife and his daughter, and I, I had a sort of current lady of the time, and I said, yeah, yeah, you know, that sounds a good idea. He took his acoustic guitar and I took my acoustic guitar because that's exactly what I would be doing if I came back off of a, a, a tour or whatever, or all the way through. I'd be playing thing on the guitar and it wouldn't be long before I'd be coming up with something, you know. So, yeah, it made sense to take the guitars down there. It wasn't an unnatural thing to be having songs that were more featured around the acoustic because I, I mean I'd always been writing on the acoustic if you see what I mean babe I'm going to leave you all that sort of stuff uh, ramble on it's there the, the, you know it's got the strong character within album one album two and so here we are at the third album and I'd always wanted to do Gallows Pole as you see the whole thing of Led Zeppelin is that you've got four members of the band and their contribution is just so strong and their character playing and that's what the Led Zeppelin vehicle was for everybody. I'd never played guitar before like I played on that first album. John Bonham never had the opportunity to play like that on anything and so on and so forth. But the essence of it is how these sort of master musicians came together and played as a band that was unparalleled and yeah the version of Gallows Pole is just is really great you know it's it's, it's a stripped down version doesn't have any mandolin doesn't have any banjo no electric guitars this is it this is where it's it's starting from it's going to get layered along the way to come through to the version that we all know finally Led Zeppelin and the alternate mix of Gallows Pole. And you can really hear the individual contributions from Jimmy Page on guitar, John Paul Jones doing some great bass lines on that, fabulous drumming from John Bonham, and uh, Robert Plant, of course, on vocals. I'm talking with Jimmy Page about the remastering of Led Zeppelin III, and I asked him, with this album, was one of the ambitions for it to prove that uh, Led Zeppelin had a great dynamic range? I think that because we had this sort of break... What the recordings were going to be, it was quite clear from the history of the first album and the second album. We're in our early days here by approaching the third, but it's a summing up 
of where we are at that point of time certainly within the whole writing and performance process because the first album and the second album are really quite radically different if you just take them on and listen to them but actually the common threads are in there that are consistent all the way through it had been a reflective time even albeit pretty short but it gave us the opportunity to continue with the policy of summing up where you were at that point of time and on the song friends uh, one of the few led zepp uh, tracks where you hear some strings i had the whole structure of friends before we went into any sort of minor rehearsal and the minor re the rehearsal was done because the first two albums were sort of rehearsed at my house so i thought suppose you'd well, go and rehearse up my way <laughs> so because of course john bonham lived in the same area so I went up there with uh, uh, Immigrant Song and Friends and I and I worked through it with Robert and John Bonham because John Paul Jones wasn't there. So, uh, but I had the whole structure of it and the, how I'd thought about that was the movements of it. I was thinking along the lines of what you would hear with Indian music, the string parts, or indeed Arabic, where where you've got this whole movement following the line in fact it's not even following the line there that's what's established but i'm thinking of that when i when i've done the structure of the song but i said i want to have strings on this following this part in fact i'd like to have had a you know a huge really deep string section with it as well did but the others did the others instantly agree with that or is there some opposition to the idea no 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 one's going to dis no one disagree with it because it, it wasn't to be on the realms of imagination that it was that it was the right way to go but john i said follow these lines and uh, that's what you had to do there was nothing you want anything else it just needed to follow the lines of what the guitar's doing so he went away and scored it and we just had a quick session with some string players to put that on and then celebration day classic led zeppelin track what do you recall about that it's got a very interesting groove to it celebration day and again when it comes down to groove you've got to say you know it's john bonham and this wonderful approach the guitar solo that's on the final thing i i used to put the guitar solos on at the end of the you know once everything else had gone on like the you know the final vocals and all of that and i'd, I'd, I'd usually put like little textures of guitar so that when robert did his final vocals you know it was pretty complete underneath but the guitar solo it is really quite joyous and cheeky and it and, and it is so in character to celebration day that's how i'd sort of arrive at doing the guitar solos but it was almost like a little a filigree piece that was you know inserted or whatever you know just to put the cherry on the cake a zeppelin there with an alternative version of celebration day as heard on the 2014 companion disc to the band's third album and before that you heard me chatting to jimmy page back in 2014 now number one from this week in 1974 is david essex 